Hey, what's up everyone? This is Nick at stridewise.com. Today I'm taking a look at the American made rugged and resilient Vanguard boot from Thursday Boot Company. So Thursday Boot Company was founded in 2014. It is one of the youngest and one of the most talked about boot companies in the industry. It was started by Nolan Walsh and Connor Wilson who had this problem that boots are expensive. I'm sure you're familiar with that problem. I mean, very good boots are expensive. And you know, uh, work boots are too clunky for the office. Dress boots are too dainty sometimes to really take out and really kick around. So the whole point of the company, at least at the get-go, was to develop the perfect dress boot, work boot hybrid. They come up with that with the Captain boot, which I actually named as my favorite pair of boots that I own and I put it in my top five boots of the year video. You can check that out right there. A lot of that has to do with the versatility and the value, which I really value very highly, but also the construction, the materials, the comfort. I really think it is a really solid, fantastic boot. Since I made that video, I've had a lot of requests for the American-made Vanguard line. This one here is a Vanguard in burnt copper leather. And this is made from their new rugged and resilient line of leather, which is quite different to the Thursday Chrome that I had the captains in. Now, I have really been wearing the hell out of these boots. I just took these on a pretty lengthy trip to the Middle East. I kicked around in them in the Jordanian desert. I took them to the archeological city of Petra. That's where Indiana Jones finds the Holy Grail, by the way. I ran around in them in Roman temples. I took them to underground caves. I went dancing in them in Beirut. I've really done the most thorough testing of a pair of boots you could possibly ask for with these. So how do they hold up? Let's take a closer look. So the Vanguard is a bit reminiscent of that classic World War II service boot type aesthetic in that it's both refined and rugged. It takes Thursday's MO of combining the silhouette of a work boot and a dress boot, although it is a little bit less slim than the captain boot, so it's a teeny tiny bit less dressy in that regard, but it's still a million times more sophisticated than your standard classic bulbous work boots like the Red Wing Iron Ranger or the Wolverine 1000 Mile. This boot is more versatile and easy to dress up than your standard daily beater boots. That said, this leather, while it may be different for some of the other leathers they use for the Vanguard, this leather, I mean, it is pretty rugged. It's leather that looks like it's made for adventuring. As I wore them in, the leather definitely got some character, but this leather really is designed for looking better and better as it gets more worn in. This is a boot that looks like it has stories to tell, and that's a quality I think a lot of guys really like in boots, especially in boots that can pretty comfortably be worn with khakis and a button down. Now, from start to finish, these shoes are made in the United States. And while a lot of companies use that label to describe just like shipping in pre-made uppers and pre-made soles and stitching them together and calling it a day, Thursdays goes a lot further than that. Like the laces are made in the US, the shank is made in the US, the eyelets are made in the US. Even the poron in the sole is made in the US, which means it's a slightly different poron than the one that's used in the sole of the Thursday captains. So while at first glance, these shoes may have a lot of similarities to the captain boots, there are several important differences that go beneath the surface. All right, let's talk about this leather. So this leather is called Bent Copper. Once again, it's part of their Rugged and Resilient line. That's a line of leathers you can get in the Captain or the President if you want, or a few of their other boots. And the Vanguard boot does come in other leathers, most of which are from Chicago's Halloween Leather Company. I've been willing to try this Bent Copper for a while because it does have a really distinctive look. When they came out of the box, you could immediately tell that the leather was tough and that this would get uh, better the more the boots are worn. It's primarily vegetable tanned and it's also oil tanned as well, which might bring to mind Red Wings leather since most of their heritage boots are oil tanned. Those that told me that the idea with this particular leather is to have a similar look to the kind of matte oil tanned leathers you see in a lot of American work boots. You know, the sort of leathers you can really beat up and know that it's just gonna make the leather look cool and not ruined. Now the leather isn't quite as chunky as some work boots, like Wolverine are about two millimeters thick while this is closer to 1.7 but that's still a lot thicker than like dress shoes, which are often about a millimeter thick. And there's not really any difference in that 0.3 millimeters as far as durability goes. Instead, the difference is that this is the uh, marginally thinner leather and it makes it a bit more versatile, a bit less clunky and a bit easier to blend into urban environments. Now, when I brought these shoes back to New York City, they were absolutely covered in sand and dust and grime from my travels. But once again, this is leather that doesn't really need babying. I gave it a brush down with my horsehair brush and then I called up Thursday to see if I should like put some saddle soap on it or something, or if I should use some products to avoid ruining the leather. And their advice, just put some water on a rag, man. Don't worry about it too much. Like this is leather that is for people who just don't like to think about what they're supposed to be doing with their leather, which is really going to appeal to a lot of folks. And if you can believe it, they had the same approach to conditioning. Like they say you don't really need to use conditioning products on this boot. And Thursday has a similar approach with some of their other leathers, like the terracotta leather. 
Now this bent copper is imbued with oils, this oil tanned leather. And oil tanned leather just doesn't need as much conditioning as something dressier like Chrome XL. Like it's a relatively moist leather as it is, it's pretty resistant to drying out. And when I spoke to Thursday, the wording they used was, that's the point of it. Like you just don't wanna to have to worry too much about this leather. Now if you are someone who worries about it too much, like myself, if you spend a lot of time agonizing and hoping that your leather is in good shape, that you're taking care of it properly, if these are like a couple of years old or they're just feeling kind of dry, I think you can get away with using neat sweat oil on these. That's like made from the rendered shin and feet bones of cattle. And neat sweat oil is a really good conditioner when you're very committed to uh, developing a rich patina and you don't wanna change the color of your boots because it doesn't penetrate very, very deeply. So that's a good option. I mean, the flip side of neat sweat oil is that because it doesn't penetrate as deeply, you're supposed to use it a bit more often. Uh, I don't think it's really a big deal with these because again, it's very tough leather. But if you do not care about darkening the leather, you could definitely use some mink oil uh, or maybe some Sophia's Renovator if you want to go like a waxier route with the look. So this sole looks like day night, which is a very fancy rubber used in pretty expensive boots, but this is actually Thursday's own rubber sole. Day night is really popular because it's a really good balance of durability and grip and flexibility and aesthetics. And I think Thursday's rubber really performs about as well. Some say it takes a tad longer to break in, but I didn't really notice much of a difference. And uh, it also maintains this nice slim look when viewed from the side. It doesn't look like it has such good grip in that it doesn't have a commando soles chunkiness. Although I should point out that some of the vanguards like the Grizzly Wheat one do have the classic Vibram commando sole if that's the look you prefer. So after the rubber outsole, there is a cork midsole and a porn insole. That's a air permeable material often used in sneaker brands. It's also antimicrobial, which means it could help with foot stink. And uh, as I mentioned, this porn comes from America. So it's a tiny bit less bouncy than the porn you get in Thursday's classic captain boot. Plus the Vanguard does not have that sneaker like EVA comfort strip that the captain and many of Thursday's other boots are known for. So what does that mean for the comfort? Now, there are a few things to point out with the comfort and the sizing with these boots. The most important thing is to note that Thursday recommends you go down a half size from your true size. So like when boots fit true to size on me, I'm 11.5, I'm an 11 in the captains. So that's what I got with the Vanguard, but this is made on a different last. It's a slightly narrower last. So the fit is a little bit closer to the foot than I honestly would have liked. With thin socks, they're totally fine. I love wearing these around. But to be perfectly honest, I would have preferred to get an 11.5 so I have like a bit more room in the shoe. But honestly, the thing that's a bit frustrating about Thursday is that they are constantly updating and upgrading their shoes. Like there are a lot of companies out there that very proudly use the same last that their great grandparents use on their boots in the fields. Thursday, on the other hand, uh, they're constantly like changing their designs, they're improving the last, they're fine tuning the stitching, things like that. So this very well may not be an issue in the future. Right now, last is a little bit narrow. So that's my point. I would recommend getting true to size. Another difference between these and the Captain boots is that this is made from the burnt copper, rugged and resilient leather. So it's tougher leather. So it took a bit more time to break in. It was a bit more stiff out of the box than Thursday's chrome boots. Again, that's just this leather. It's not necessarily the same for all of the Vanguard boots, which are available in a bunch of different leathers. This was a bit stiffer. That's not to say that it was uncomfortable. I didn't get any blisters or anything. This is fully lined with a uh, glove leather from Halloween in Chicago. Nonetheless, yeah, it uh, took a bit more time to break in, but I would honestly expect nothing less from a boot this tough. Finally, the other thing I wanted to point out is that this does not have the layer of EVA comfort foam that you will see in like the Captain boot or a lot of other Thursday boots. So that's like a layer that is used in sneakers a lot of the time and it contributes to like a very soft feeling when you're walking around with them, at least as it slowly molds to your foot. So this just has a more sort of traditional work boot feel. Now it does have poron, which definitely has a lot of benefits as far as uh, improving shock absorption and as far as like reducing stink as well, which is like a very nice side effect. So it definitely feels a lot more comfortable than and your more traditional work boots, especially the Red Wing Iron Ranger or the Chippewa Service Boot, which have just like terrible shock absorption that feels like you're walking around on wood. This side, uh, it is more comfortable than your average work boot, but it is a more traditional feeling than the Thursday Captain. I don't think that's a negative at all. I find them very comfortable and you might see it as a positive. It, it's a really an individual thing. All right, so what's the price? Thursday Boot Company is making waves in the boot industry for a lot of reasons, and the value is a really big part of that. These shoes cost $265, and while that is a little bit more expensive than like the Captain Boots and the President Boots, these are made in America boots, and I still think that's a really, really good deal. I really need to make it clear though that I don't think boots are necessarily bad quality just because they're made overseas. I really think that's a fallacy. The Captain is actually a really good example of that, 
But also like Grant Stone's diesel boot is made in China and that's a pretty good shoe, although it's much more expensive than these shoes. But if your priority is keeping money inside the United States, then the Vanguard has got you covered. Yes, it is a tad pricier than the Captains and the Presidents, but this is still much, much, much less than I would expect to pay for a pair of boots with this quality. Like they're really tough as nails. I wore the hell out of them walking around in these. They haven't taken on any damage. They're comfortable, they've got a steel shank, they're leather lined, uh, they're beautiful, they're versatile. So uh, I really think it's still a fantastic deal. All right, so why should you get a pair of Thursday Vanguards? Uh, they're very tough shoes. Uh, the leather is indeed very rugged and resilient, like they say, but it's not just the leather. The construction is very solid. The sole is very solid and tough while also providing a decent amount of grip while still being nice and flat from the outside. Uh, it's got a 360 degree Goodyear welt, so it means you can resole them if you want to. It means that you can last through like a few generations of soles if you take care of them. And they don't need that much care. Like the leather barely needs any conditioning at all. It's also got a pour on insole, which uh, first of all makes the shock absorption better than like a Red Wing Iron Ranger, but it also means they stink less. So they're just like shoes you can leave lying around and not think about too much when you're not wearing them, which is gonna have a big upside to a lot of guys, especially those who are sort of daunted by all these leather care and shoe care routines that everyone says you have to use on all of your nice shoes. Finally, they're very versatile as well. Like for work boots, they're very versatile. You can't wear them with a suit or anything. I'm the first to say that, this burnt copper leather, it really does look like it's made for adventuring. But the silhouette is slim enough that you can really wear these with sort of nicer outfits, wear them out to dinner. I've worn them out to dinner here in Manhattan a few times. They work with modern, dressier, slimmer outfits, as well as more casual like baggy jeans and a t-shirt type outfits as well. They also have free returns, which is a big bonus. And of course, they're very, very inexpensive. All right, now I did have some complaints with these shoes. They don't have any wider sizes and that's gonna be a real bummer for guys who need like the wider shoes. Uh, it also has a pretty narrow last to begin with. Like I said, I kinda need to wear thin socks when I'm wearing these. It's fine, all that really means is you should like order true to size. That's just my advice for you. You follow that, I think you're gonna be fine. Another thing is that this does not contain the EVA comfort strip that there's is like very well known for putting into their shoes. So it does have a different feel. If you're going for the feeling of a, a captain or a president, you're not really going to get that. It's not quite as soft on the inside. But again, like it still is more comfortable than your classic work boot. It's still got good shock absorption. So you're gonna be okay. They just feel more like traditional work boots, if you know what I mean. Another thing I wanted to mention, uh, this leather, it is not especially dressy. I mean, I just mentioned that, but no, you can't wear these this suit. Even sometimes like with an outfit with a blazer, you'd feel a bit funny wearing these. This leather is for adventuring. But of course the boot is available in a bunch of other leathers, some of which are quite a lot dressier than this. So it's not really downside of this model, it's more of downside of this particular leather that I wanted to point out. It's also more expensive than most of their other shoes because it's made in America. Thursday is very well known for these $200 high quality boots. These are $265, but they're still a lot less expensive than other boots of similar quality. Finally, they are mostly online. They do have a couple of stores here in New York City, but if you are not in New York City, you can't try them on before you buy them. So that's definitely a real downer for a lot of people, especially if you have like wide feet, you're not sure if you're gonna fit into them, then you get them, it's very disappointing. But again, they have free returns, so it's not a huge risk. All right, those are my thoughts on the American-made Thursday Vanguard boot. Uh, the full written review is on my site. If you just Google Stratowise and Vanguard, that should pop up. I go into a bit more detail with all of this. And make sure you subscribe as well, because I've got a ton of reviews coming up.